This is Valley News Live at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Plenty of rain has fallen in the valley. Now let's send it over to Nathan Hopper who has more on how much dropped in our area. Nathan. Yeah, thanks. Nishay saw a lot of that much needed rainfall making its way through the valley this morning. Saw some severe storms up toward the south, but by and large, most of us just saw that uh, rainfall on this first alert weather day for today. So a, a look at uh, radar estimates of how much radar estimated rainfall fell uh, with these storms today. We'll see uh, most areas in the one to three inch range there at this time. But of course, uh, there's some spots that are radar estimated around four inches in portions of South Dakota and maybe even a few radar estimated locations near four inches in Roseau County. But this is a 48 hour precipitation estimate. So you can see that those storms from this morning really helped out and added some moisture uh, to those areas off into portions of South Dakota and Minnesota. Here's the radar right now. Still seeing some showers and storms pushing their way through our neck of the woods, looking into South to, uh, our southern North Dakota neighborhoods near, near Lemoore, near Ashley, seeing a few rumbles of thunder. Those are moving toward the Castleton area and in Minnesota seeing some showers and storms, some moving toward Fergus Falls as well and Perm. So, of course, Nache will track uh, the, these storms and let you know when they exit and look ahead to what we can expect for our Sunday in a few minutes. All right. Thank you so much, Nathan. During a briefing today, President Joe Biden urged people in Louisiana to take Hurricane Ida seriously and be prepared. Ida is now projected to hit the Louisiana coast tomorrow as a category four hurricane, generating winds of 140 miles per hour. Biden says he has already deployed 500 FEMA personnel to the region. This weekend is the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, and it's a stark reminder that we have to do everything we can to prepare the people in the region and make sure we're ready to respond. And people living along Louisiana's coast are taking the advice from president from the president and local government leaders as they are bracing for Hurricane Ida. Many people are filling up their gas tanks, stocking up on essential foods and filling sandbags. In New Orleans, the mayor ordered a mandatory evacuation for people living outside the city's levee system. A federal judge has rejected a lawsuit by the state of Missouri seeking to stop a project that would supply water from the Missouri River to central North Dakota. The ruling will enable the Federal Bureau of Recl Reclamation to move ahead with a water service contract for the central North Dakota water supply project. The project will receive water for systems in Burley, Sheridan, Foster and Stutzman counties. The Missouri suit alleged violations of federal policy, including failure by project developers to properly study the project's environmental impacts and its alternatives. But a U.S. district judge ruled against Missouri on all counts on Wednesday. About 13 million gallons a day is expected to be supplied to central North Dakota. And attendance for the minister Minnesota State Fair's opening day saw a 50% decrease compared to 2019. State Fair officials announced that 61,883 people walked through the gates on Thursday. In 2019, the fair broke its opening day attendance record with 100,333 326 visitors in 2018. Opening day saw more than 120,000 attendees. As of 4 p.m. today, Sikki's Garage in East Grand Forks has shut its doors, according to an on-duty manager. This closing comes just days after the franchise announced its opening of a second location in Fargo at the site of the former Old Chicago restaurant. Despite the rain, the Fargo United event would not be stopped as the fund was taken indoors to the Kennedy Elementary School. The event was a chance for the community and local organizations to build relationships and bond with one another. With last summer being impacted by COVID-19, some say events like this are a breath of fresh air for all involved. Today, it was not just Fargo PD in attendance as groups like Sanford Health were there to be a part of the fund. It's super awesome. We like to get out in the community as much as we can. Um, we like to build those partnerships too as well, just to give the community certain resources that they may need. Um, it's super fun, of course, coming to these events. We get to see families, um, get to make those connections with people in the community. So it's super fun for us to get out and be able to do this. So. Tune in to Valley News Live at 9 and 10 to hear as Fargo PD are 
continuing to build bonds with the community. Hundreds of voting rights activists gathered in Washington, D.C. today to commemorate the 58th anniversary of the March on Washington, immortalized by Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. The National Action Network sponsored the March on for Washington and voting rights, which held similar protests in several cities across the country. These activists say they are fighting against voter suppression as 48 states, most recently Texas, have introduced legislation to restrict voting rights. Mass mandate debates are increasing, forcing states to weigh their options. Here's the latest. With the U.S. still falling well short of the 70% vaccination rate experts say is needed to achieve herd immunity, troubling new information about the Delta variant. A study out of the U.K. finds that the now dominant Delta strain is not only more contagious, but also more dangerous, doubling the risk of hospitalization compared to the once common Alpha variant. That's bad news for many Americans, only 52% of whom are fully vaccinated against COVID, and the White House is urging people to get the shot. If you're an American who is not yet vaccinated, or if you're an employer who has yet to adopt vaccination requirements, we have a very simple message. Get off the sidelines, step up, and do your part. But as the government pushes Americans to do more to stay safe, the debate over masks rages on. The New York State Department of Health will now require students, faculty, and staff at all public and private schools in the state to wear masks while inside school buildings. And judges in Texas and Florida are pushing back against bans on mask mandates that were implemented by Republican governors in those states, ruling that school districts are allowed to require students to mask up. In Alabama, where counties are mixed on mask mandates, at least 5,500 school-aged children tested positive for COVID during the week ending on August 21st. Cases and deaths are on the rise in that state, with double-digit deaths reported every day for the past three weeks. Alabama state health officer says the situation is dire and people need to take this seriously. We are really in a crisis situation. Um, I, we've said that over and over for several weeks. Um, we need people to understand that you yourself, if you're hearing these words, you're the person who can make a difference. You need to be responsible for your behavior. You need to do what it takes to not continue this situation. Meanwhile, the mystery over what started COVID in the first place remains unsolved. A 90-day investigation by the U.S. intelligence community concluded that the virus could have come from a laboratory leak or jump from animal to human naturally. The Pentagon says they successfully completed a drone strike in Afghanistan in retaliation for the deadly bombing at the Kabul airport this week. Two high-profile ISIS targets were killed and one was wounded. And we know of zero civilian casualties. Pentagon officials said all the targets were hit in a single strike and that they were ISIS-K planners and facilitators. President Joe Biden approved the strike against ISIS-K on Friday after vowing to retaliate for the terrorist attack on Thursday. 13 U.S. service members and at least 170 were killed outside Kabul's international airport. And planes continue to depart from Kabul's international airport today in final evacuation flights from the Taliban-controlled region. The deadline to end the rescue operation and withdraw American personnel is just three days away. More than 100,000 people have been safely evacuated through the airport, according to the U.S., but thousands more are struggling to leave. The Taliban have said they will allow Afghans to leave via commercial flights after the U.S. withdrawal, but it is unclear which airline would return to an airport controlled by militants. And meanwhile, an Afghan woman on board an evacuation flight to Britain's Birmingham delivered her baby on board, Turkish Airlines said in a statement today. A 26-year-old woman was on board the Turkish Airlines flight from Dubai when she began having contractions. The cabin crew helped the woman deliver the baby as the plane flew at an altitude of 32,000 feet in Kuwait airspace. Baby and mom are said to be in good condition. The plane landed in Kuwait as a precaution, but later continued on to its destination. Later on Valley News Live at 6, federal employees could soon get a pay raise.
and an update to our severe weather threat. The storms from earlier this morning made that environment less favorable for severe storms there across Lakes Country, but still not completely out of the woods yet. Still in the marginal risk of severe weather for our southern neighborhoods. Of course, we'll break down what you can expect for tonight and the rest of the weekend after the break.